Terry and Denise heard me uh, preach. Now, see, Terry is one of my heroes. I'm trying to look like him. I've never had a beard in my life, and I said, I'm going to try it. It's starting to bother me, though. I'm, it itches. I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 64, and I'm going to preach about dwelling in Beulah land, how it brings revival. This morning was revival. Amen. I told the preacher, even before the service began, I said, now, this is going to be the church we're going to be coming to, but we've got a couple of places we have to go to uh, see her mother and see my sister, and we've been gone a couple of weeks, so we're going to wait after that. Well, the Holy Spirit this morning got a hold of me, got a hold of my wife, and she looked at me, and I looked at her, and this is it. It's time, you know. I'm glad also for a pastor that not only preaches a word, and Brother James Childers preaches the word, but I'm also glad that he minds the Holy Spirit. I know preachers that have said, well, i got to preach no matter what. There's time. Let's just let the Lord take care of it. Amen. Okay, over in Isaiah chapter 64, but turn back before that couple chapters, 62 verse 4 is one I want to read first. Now I want you to understand something. First thing we must realize here is Israel was in captivity seven different times. Now what happened to them, they'd get in the will of God and boy, God would bless and bless and bless and bless and then the next thing you know, they got prosperous. Sound a little bit like us in America. Then they would think they could do it on their own. And now then they would come along and the first thing they would start doing is, well, we don't need God. Does that sound like America today? We do our own. We do our own thing. And so that's the way it went with Israel every time. Now they're in captivity. In Isaiah 62 verse 4 says, Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Neither shall thy land be more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hepzibah. In other words, my, my delight is in her. And the land Beulah. You know what Beulah means? Married. Who are we married to? The Lord Jesus Christ. He come back one day after his bride, and I want to be a part of that. Amen. And so, uh, the Lord delighteth in thee, and the land shall be married. Now, let's go to the text. Isaiah 64, verse 1 through 8. Oh, that thou would, wouldest rend the heavens. Now they're in captivity. Oh, my goodness sakes. It's terrible. Bro, James is, I mean... It's totally bad. So bad, let me tell you, it is so bad that the soldiers would take little babies and throw them against the wall and crack their heads up wide open. That's how bad it would become. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the water to boil, to make thy name known unto thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things, which we, we look for. In other words, you've done things we wasn't expecting to happen. Thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by their ear. Neither has the eye seen. Boy, I can't imagine what heaven is going to look like. I can't imagine when Jesus comes down on the cloud and calls us up to glory. I get all excited. You know, I, I, I'm 78 years old. I still get excited. I get excited when the Holy Spirit comes down and begins to fill you. He said, but... 
neither has the eye seen. Oh God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Thou meetest him that rejoiced and worketh righteousness. Those who remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth. For we have sinned in those is continuance, and we shall be saved, but we are all as an unclean thing. Ooh. And all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. Somehow or another people think they can make it just because they're good. All that we can ever muster up is like filthy rags. And he goes on and he said, and we do fade as a leaf. And our iniquities like the wind. In other words, our sins have taken us away. And there is none that call upon thy name. That stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us. And hast consumed us because of our iniquities. Let's pray. Lord, as we come to you this afternoon. I count it a great, 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 wonderful privilege to preach in a pulpit of a man that I admire that has done such a great work. I count it a privilege once again to be able to stand and preach thy word. It's a joy, Lord. It's a privilege that you have granted me. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done. In Christ's name, and amen. Those of you who don't, uh, don't know her, Melba over here, stand up, honey. That's my, my wife. Many of you knew when I was married to Evelyn and she died of cancer. And I married Melba. Lord sent her along and you know what? She is part Indian, so I got a red-headed Indian. Boy, you got your hand full of that. <laughs> now, I want to go back just a little bit before I really get into this. I want you to look what Isaiah called the preachers of the day. He says in, in uh, uh, chapter 56, verse 10, he said, his watchmen are blind like dogs. He said in verse 11, they're greedy dogs. He goes down and he said, they re rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. I was reading, and you'll know who I'm talking about. I'll not mention his name. But I was reading online the other day about a preacher and his yacht. How fabulous it was. How did it cost, I think, 50 or $60 million. Oh, he's on television. Everybody's probably seen him. And, and all the money he's got in the mansion that he owns and all that. Hmm, it's amazing. Paul didn't have anything. Jesus had a a stone to lay his head on. And yet today, many preachers think, well, I have to have this. It's hard today to get a, a, a young preacher straight out of Bible college for less than $60,000 a year. Now, folks, I never made that in my life, but that's beside the point. Look here, if you will, now. Remember, Isaiah, when he starts out here, he said, Thy land, Beulah, shall be called. For the Lord delighteth in thee. That's coming, he says. Then, then as I, I thought of that, I thought about a, a, an illustration. A little boy went to church with his dad, and, and they had one of them services that was a great service. But that night, as his dad took him in by his bed, he, he began to pray, and he said this. He said, Lord, we had a wonderful service. I wish you was there. Amen. Boy, I'm glad the Lord was with us this morning. If you did not feel the sweet Holy Spirit this morning, you need to get the altar right now. God was here in a marvelous, fantastic way. And when they began singing, the whole service, God blessed. God was in the midst you see, the real preacher was here. Amen, brother children. The real preacher was here. When the Holy Spirit visits us, we better mind him. And that's, as I look at this, I think 
many times what has happened here in, in this text is uh, this is the case in many churches. You see, we go to, we go to church and, and, and God's presence isn't there. Folk, I, I've preached in seven countries and 17 states, and I've preached in some churches that, where's the Lord at? What have I done, Lord? And dead is what I'm trying to say. I've been in church services where it seemed like uh, you'd have had pinched somebody to get a, a, a noise out of them. That were so quiet. I'm glad people raised their hand in this service. I'm glad I looked at the preacher and I said, boy, I haven't seen that in a long time. He had both hands up. You know what that means? I surrender. You don't surrender with one hand. I surrender, Lord. Here I am. That's what we ought to do. Every time we come to service, we ought to surrender and let the Holy Spirit have his sweet way. Now, Isaiah uh, in verse 64 shows us how to have a revival. It tells us what revival is. See, revival is not uh, bringing in some big name preacher and, and, and paying him. I remember one time I had a preacher, and Denise, you know what I'm talking about, you and Terry. I had a preacher in, and uh, your dad used to be his assistant. Well, the first time, pretty good. Second time, we gave him $1,200. Now, I, I'm talking about 27 years ago. Kept him in my house, fed him, gave him everything he wanted. They done the washing and the drying and all that. And he left and he said, I'll not be back. And I said, well, why? He said, I can't live on that. Listen, I don't preach for money. I never, I'd pay people to let me preach. Sometimes they say, boy, we'd have to, I guess. But anyway, Isaiah shows us how to have revival. But Isaiah Tell us what revival is. What is revival? It isn't how many souls get saved. We love to see souls saved. It isn't, it isn't the singing, shouting, or all that. It's when the Holy Spirit begins to move upon people. When the Holy Spirit begins to talk to us. When the Holy Spirit brings his message to us. Now look, if you will, I, I want to give you a definition here of revival. That's what we had this morning, by the way. That's what we had this morning. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens and come down. Lord, just please come down and visit us. Please come down and be a part of us. Please, Lord, we want you to be with us. You see, that's when revival comes. When, when we open our hearts and we realize we're nothing but sinful men. And God says, okay, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bring joy to your soul. I needed that this morning. It's been really hard to retire from pastoring and, and uh, not hard in moving. Oh, i got to tell you a little bit about that, how the Holy Spirit works. We prayed and prayed and prayed for over two years about moving back to North Carolina. We prayed and we would say this and finally the Lord said, okay, enough's enough. We went outside and put a sign in front of the house, house for sale. In three hours, the house sold. What do you think about that? Holy Spirit, God took care of it. We've been praying. We wanted to, we wanted to get a, uh, a camper. Now, I'm not one of these to leave on the weekend, just camp. I got a sister that broke her hip a uh, year before last, and we had to spend almost two months up there with her in Ice and Kentucky. I got a mother in law, sweetest thing ever was. She wouldn't harm a flea. Now, I won't say that, but she is really sweet. She broke her hip twice last year. Melba was four months up there. I said, well, wait a minute. We got a camper at least. We'll have a place to lay our head down if we go to either one. So we prayed and prayed, and those things are expensive. I mean, to tell you, and we prayed, and finally a, a fellow in our church, he said this. He said, I got a friend that's got one for sale. Said, it is in perfect condition. And he said, it's got a big motor. It's 32 foot. 
And I said, I can't afford nothing like that. Well, I want to tell you something. I, I bought it for half of what we priced others for. We bought it, and I went up there, and I told the fellow, I said, I can't buy it till I get the money for my house. Okay, that's fine. No problem. We got it. We loaded up everything we owned besides the big furniture we sold it. We looked like the Beverly Hillbillies coming down through Atlanta. I'm telling you, I had that thing full of everything. You couldn't walk through it. I had my truck towing it on a trailer, and it completely full. Lord, please, may the Holy Spirit guide us. And so he did. We had prayed for, I don't know if any of you know Charlie Hopper. We come up here three, maybe four weeks ago and seen him called. He said, I, I'll find you a house. Charlie Hopper for three days <laughs> took us all over Rutherford County. He said, well, it looks like you're going to have to come back. We'll look some more. I mean, we spent three solid days. We pulled in the driveway where we're, we bought. We looked at one another and said, this is where God wants us. You see, what I'm trying to say is, if you try your best to listen to God, have I always done that? No. I failed. I've come short of the glory of God. Well, preacher, you mean you felt most certainly have. I mean, in 51 years of preaching, there's times, oh, Lord, I sure did mess that up. There's times when I'll say, Lord, is that really what you want me to preach? And I think every preacher has done the very same thing. But here is this definition. You see, Isaiah is proclaiming this to them. They're downtrod. They're down at the bottom of the valley. They're as low as you can get. They've lost everything. They've lost their homes. They've lost their, their place of worship. They have lost their city. Everything is gone. And they are there. Now what are we going to do? God has the answer. By the way, God's got the answer for every problem you've got. God's blessed me in, in so many different ways. I, I just, you know, I just cannot believe he is still God. No matter what I do, he says, okay, I forgive you. That's all we got to do is say, Lord, forgive me. And I need your help. Then, then I look here. You see, the people were shallow. They went to church. How many did they just go to church? They don't get any feeling out of it. They don't get, I know we're not saved by feeling, but buddy, if you don't feel nothing, you ain't got it. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm glad you can feel something. I'm glad you can go to the house of the Lord. Raise your hand. Shout if you want to. You know, it, man, God, I'm glad you got a place here that you can worship God. But they were shallow. They, they really had, they were burning in their soul. The reason why is because they had turned from God. You'll never prosper turning from God. If you listen to God and let, I used to, I used to buy a car every other year. I'd go out and buy it, and then as soon as I got home, why in the world I do that? Now, when you're younger, you do stupid things. Get a little older. I finally, I learned, if I pray about it, God will supply it. And God has in everything. I mean, I've never... If you ask God and wait upon the Lord, don't get ahead of him. Don't say, boy, I like that, and then go do it without asking God. You see, or then you ask him for it. But revival, you see, Isaiah knew how they were hurting. And this preacher, here's what he said. He says, listen, I'm going to pray on your behalf to God. I, I'm going to pray that you that God will hear you. Oh, he said, oh, if you just open up the windows of heaven. And that's what, that's what God wants to do. You know, he, he said he'll, he'll bless you more than ever. Thought about tithing this morning. And I'm not bragging, James, but we're sitting there and I said, write the check out. We haven't given our tithes and 
since we've been traveling. I said, got to give her tithes right now. I believe in that all my life. And folk, if you want to be blessed, give to God. Because you cannot outgive him. So Isaiah, he began to cry out unto him. You see, Isaiah didn't have any uh, theological problems. He didn't think, well, now, if I tell him to do this, God, he just minded the Holy Spirit. He just minded what God told him to do. By the way, as you notice, the Holy Spirit is mentioned in these verses. Don't just think the Holy Spirit come upon uh, us in this day and time. The Holy Spirit, most time it was in individuals, but the Holy Spirit spoke then also. Uh, Isaiah knew how great the God was. He said, it is he that setteth upon the circle of the earth. It's he. It's God that sits up there. It's God that knows what's going on. Now the devil tries to fool us. The devil will be there trying his best to discourage you. There's never a time in a Christian's life that the devil will not try to discourage you. My first wife died and she was, she was my rock. Denise will tell you that. She suffered for almost 10 years with bladder cancer. And it was hard. It was really hard. But the last words she told me, she said, Ed, don't quit preaching. It's kind of amazing. We was on our way from, I was pastoring in a little place in, in Florida, and I knew we had to go over there uh, to Pensacola. Her doctors was over there, and we was making 140 my one-way trip three times a week to the doctor over there. And I said, well, I just got to give it up. Love the church. And Mabel will tell you right now, they would have me back as pastor if I go. But, of course, I don't feel the calling. But God provided. And as we was driving the very last time, going to our house that we had bought in Pensacola and prayed and prayed about it, she just as soon as she said that, here's what she said. Don't quit preaching because God will provide. It was at that very moment, going through Crestview, Florida, on I-10, the phone rang. I picked my cell phone up and, yes, they said Hutchison. We uh, told me his name. We live in Pensacola, Florida. And we need a pastor. Praise God. You see, if you mind God, God will provide. We, we need to experience God's presence. Not just know about it. Not just read about it. Not just hear it from somebody. But experience God. A, one of the books I got is Experiencing God. Oh, I'm glad I... I experience God. I've been preaching 51 years. God has never forsaken me. Many years ago, I was an engineer with an oil company. I was making $47,000 a year. Now, I'm talking a long time ago. I had a new car furnished, an unlimited expense account, and God called me to Shelby, North Carolina for $250 a week and no insurance, no nothing. But you know what? My wife, my two daughters graduated from college. No debt. How was it done? I don't know how it was done. But I can promise you this, and you know this to do. I can promise you this. God took care of it. God will always, and that's what Isaiah is trying to tell them. Now, I want to give you a, a, a little more about this revival thing. You see, true revival shakes up the church. I mean, it will shake it up. I've been in a few services like that, like this morning, where God takes hold. Preacher, don't let preach. God has got it in control. It's just minding and listening to God and listening to what God is trying to tell us. That, folk, is real. 
revival. And that's what Isaiah was trying to tell them right here. Uh, you know, God does a shaking every now and then. We talk about the shakers, but God does a real shaking. You remember at Sinai, what happened to Moses? The earth began to shake. When Christ returns, what's going to happen? There's going to be another shaking. Oh, my goodness sake, can you imagine coming up out of the graves, the dead shall rise first. Somebody said, why they first? Got a little further to go. It's the only thing I can answer you. But the dead shall rise first. I want to be amongst that. But I'd sure love to be here, Brother James, when, when Jesus comes back. And I look up and see going up toward heaven, my mom and dad and grandpa and, and, and all these that, that through the years that I've known and known Christ, I, I preach so many funerals, it's almost uh, innumerable. And to see many of them go to heaven, oh, what a day, what a day, what a day. You see, Isaiah spoke of the mountains. Every now and then we're in a valley. You ever been in a valley? Oh, my goodness sakes, it's terrible. But you know, you grow in the valley. You grow among the thorns and the thistles. And then we have one of those mountaintop experiences. That's what God provided us this morning. One of those great mountaintop experiences. Well, then he describes revivals being a, a fire. Fire represents the sweet Holy Spirit. Now, in verse 2 it says, And when the melting fire burneth, the fire causes the water to boil. When fire comes down from heaven, you're not going to have trouble in church then. When fire comes down from heaven, the grappers and the groaners and the growlers will shut their mouth because they can't stand the heat. Oh, their sweet heat that comes down and warms our soul. This brings down the Holy Spirit from God when this happens. Then there's a, a directive for revival. Look at verse 7. There is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold on thee. Thou hast hid thy face from us because of our iniquities. And I begin to think about that. And I think, oh my, if we just listen to God, call on God's name. God is there. God, first of all, he wants to hear you if you sin to repent. God is going to be there for you and he's going to hear you and he's going to answer. God is always ready there for us when we repent. Then we need to pray. Oh, there's not much prayer going on today. Prayer in many churches is done by professionals that are, that are supporting a pastor that's in it for the money. God help. That's the reason they're not far. When somebody tells you, well, I'm not sure there's a hell or not. There is a hell. I'm not sure about heaven and who's going to heaven. This and going... That one's not, no, that's not it. God give us a free will. God said, whosoever will shall be saved. Whosoever will. That's you, that's me, that's all of us. Then not only do we need to pray up, we need to wake up. Here's what he said, stir ourselves. Wake up, church, wake up. Jesus is coming back. I wonder what would happen if, there's a big headline, and the biggest newspaper said, something's happened to a bunch of people. We can't find them. You know what it is? That's the catching away. That is the real time when God is calling his church home. I want to be in that number. You want to be in that number? Oh, to be in that number, you got to wake up and stir yourself up and realize, listen, the preacher can't do it all. Folk, he bring the best message in the world, and I have never heard Brother James Childers, and I've heard him several times, preach a bad message. You want to know why? He listens to God. He listens to what the Holy Spirit has to say. 
God doesn't just do that for the preacher or the pastor. God does that for every one of us if we'll open our ears. Not only wake up, then we need to draw up. You know what that means? That means we need to lay hold on God. Get real close. I love a church that hugs. Don't you all? I don't like to go to one of them churches where, hello, how are you? Man, I'm a hugger. I can imagine God putting his arms around us. Jesus Christ welcoming, welcoming, got my tongue tied, us into the gates of heaven. Can, can you imagine that? It isn't going to be, well, welcome. I'm looking for a hug, getting into heaven and the joy and the peace and the, the, the greatness of heaven. I can't imagine what heaven's going to look like. I can't imagine how great it's going to be. Then, then he talks about the results of revival. L look with me there now, if you will, in, in uh, Isaiah 6, 2, 4. The land, Beulah. He sang that a while ago. And, oh, I love that. I preached in a revival up in West Virginia, and Squire Parsons and his family sang at that revival. Oh, my goodness. Sweet Beulah land. How wonderful it's going to be. No more hurting. No more old age. <laughs> no more knees that are given away. I left Pensacola because I couldn't breathe there, but I knew the Lord would lead me away from there. But, but you know, none of that. All the medications that we have to take, which I counted this morning, I take eight pills and two shots. I might have to do that anymore. <laughs> They'll be shouting. Listen, if you're going to be in the corner of glory land where it's all dried up and pruned face, you better stay there because you're going to hear shouting because if nobody else shouting, I'm going to be doing the shouting. Amen? Amen. The land shall be called Beulah. For the Lord delighteth in thee. That's what, that's what Beulah means. Did you know that? It means the word a delightful land. Well, I hope he sings that song for long again. A delightful land. A wonderful land. I've been, been over to Israel. Beautiful place. I go back if I had the money. don't have the money, but I go back if I had the money. Someone said, aren't you scared over there? No, that's God's land. And I'm thinking one day when, when Jesus calls the church up and we go to heaven, what a great time it's going to be. Then when, when Jesus comes back, oh, my goodness, I think of beautiful land. Oh, sweet, delightful, beautiful land. You know the song. Dwell in beautiful land. I wish he had ready. We'd sing it right now. But you know how it goes. Of course, Squire Parsons wrote this and sang it. I'm living on the mountain underneath a cloudless sky. We face many clouds in our life. Amen. Denise and Daddy Eddie is my best friend in the whole world. He's suffering. Can't preach now. Can't even walk now. But Denise, very soon, he's going to be walking on the streets of Beulah Land. Amen. Oh, you talk about a time. You talk about the time of glory. That's the time it's going to be. He says, I'm drinking from the fountain that never shall run dry. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful thought. I'm feasting on the manna from a Bountiful supply for I'm dwelling in beautiful land. That isn't just future though, folks. I do believe that we of the church can have a good taste of beautiful land right down here. If you want a drink of the living waters, Amen. here's the place to get it. If you want to grow in the grace of God, here's the place to do it. If you want a blessing from God, 
here's the place to do it. It is not watching Joel Osteen that I was talking about on television and send your money to him. I got to tell this story and I'll quit in just a second. Brother Eddie Dollar and I, he, we get together every week when he pastored over this way. <clears throat> he called me one day and he said, I got to go clear down to the hospital in Green, Greenville. Uh, you want to come go with me? I said, sure. We always had a good time of eating and fellowshipping and talking. So we went down to the hospital. A little old lady, and I don't know her name, Denise, mine, but don't know her name, but we went in and talked with her a few minutes, had prayer with her. We started at the door, and she handed Eddie a, a letter and it was, it was addressed to one of the TV evangelists. And Eddie looked at it, and I looked at it. I said, what's this for? Oh, that's my tithes. I'm sending to him. Eddie, you know how quiet he was. He said, well, I'll tell you what. And I think you ought to just call him and come visit you in the hospital. I'm glad I serve a God that loves us. Aren't you? I'm glad I know Jesus. I am glad of that. How about you? Are you dwelling in Beulah land or, or are you trodden on the devil's soil? It's going to be one or the other. You're either for God or you're against God. You're either for Satan or you're against him. It can't. You're either hot or cold. You know what? The Bible says, I'll, let me get back here. I don't want to spit on it. Literally, it means this. I'll spew you out of my mouth. Literally, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I want to be hot for Jesus. I don't care how old I am. I want to be hot for Jesus. Amen. Let's all stand. And these come up. I, I don't know how you normally do this, but I just.